So for as long as I can remember, for as long as I have been aware of its existence, I have wanted to build this. I'm showing you this crappy picture because it is one of only two pictures of this. It is the best picture that we have of this. And what is it? Well, this is a concept model that was not produced, but was at least designed by Lego back in 2005, amongst many other builds. And I really like the aesthetic of this and the idea of it in my own story, which, by the way, if you want to continue reading my story and my rewrite of the Metro Nui story as it stands, go ahead and check it out over on the Discord. It is a pinned comment in the Your Creations channel, and it is free to join. The Discord link is down in the description below. But back to this, what role do I think this plays? Well, in 2005, obviously the Toa Hordika need to evacuate the island of Metronui. Well, I guess technically 2004 before the Hordika, but whatever. You get to the point, right? Still, the Metru need to evacuate the, uh, Metru Nui. They need to get the Matoran off the island. The Matoran are already conveniently in spheres, so rather than awaken them on Metru Nui, take them off of the island in the spheres. Good for transport, right? But they do so, as far as I'm aware, using a vehicle rather than a Rahi. But I like the idea of a Rahi better. Maybe it's just me. For, uh, for part, in my portion of the story where the uh, Toa Metru need to remove the Matoran from the island, the Great Cataclysm has just happened, has just erupted, and now Rahi are sprawling around on the island, so this is one of the Rahi that they enlist to help, right? A water strider. And I think it works well, too, because of it being this water-like aquatic creature. Instead of having a, an airship or a boat or something to transport these orbs, seeing several of these make their way to Matanui from Metronui, in part is kind of poetic since Matanui, for a lot of its history, is sort of a Rahi haven, right? But also, in general, it's just a really convenient way to get the Matoran from point A to point B in terms of build, right? So I really like the idea of something like this. So I've started working on it as of yesterday. Just note, that it is a very early work in progress and it needs continual cleanup, but I'm going to show you that right now. I'm really selling myself here. So without further ado, I'm going to show you this in two parts. I'm going to show you the lower leg first, which I know might seem weird, but it's because it is the most polished portion of the build so far. So it just looks really good. And be aware, I made it red, which was probably a mistake for the video because, yeah, it's oversaturated, but I do like it. I should make uh, you aware that this red piece right here is a bootleg, so that is Mata red, but it is a Metru foot. All of the pieces used on this, though, and in fact on the entire build, existed in 2005, when my story takes place. So that means that this piece on the back here also is, you know, able to be used. Something I would like to do is keep the parts used to the appropriate era because i want anybody who has a collection of their own to be able to build this probably for other people they'll be building this in black rather than red because again bootleg here and you know also generally pieces like this can be a little bit harder to get your hands on black is just a very easy color to work with because like everything comes in black right that said if i were to see this model on store shelves if i had it my way I actually think I would make it Metro Brown, and that might seem weird at first. It's not my favorite color. It's probably my least favorite Metro color, but the reason for this is because Makuta Duma, also in my story, would be a set released in Wave 1 of 2005, and in my story, I'm thinking he's going to have either Mata Red or Metro Red on him. And so if we take a look at the characters that came out in 2004, Nadiki and Kreka, right? Dark blue, dark green, and now we would get dark red, or potentially matcha red, we'll see, and we would get metru brown, meaning that we would now have available to us all six of the metru colors to work with in Technic. So it's about uh, uh, apply, uh, applying, that's not the right word, it's about giving support to these colors, right? Because you can build with white and black Technic parts already, they existed long before Metro. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at this, and then we will put the whole thing together. This is the body as it stands so far, very Scopio adjacent for sure, and I'm going to continue to work on this part because I don't think it's nearly as polished as the lower leg is, but I am fairly happy with the design of this as it stands. It's definitely a little more gappy than this, but the reason for that is because there's some movement and some limiters built into this. So in terms of that movement, first things first, the ankle is free moving so that it stays level on the ground at all times. That's easy enough to understand. 
the hip or knee rather is able to move at this joint from a pure 90 degree angle all the way up to a 180 degree or straight line. It can't move any further back because of this right here colliding with this Borok shield. So that prevents it from going further, which is nice. On top of that, the leg can also move at this click hinge as well, and it can move three times, one, two, three. So it has four different settings total, right? It is at this point limited by not only this Metro torso here, but also by this lift arm as well. So it cannot go any further down than that, meaning that the leg is now able to reach the ground and hold the model this high off the ground. I think that's pretty impressive overall. But if we combine those two functions, you can see we can splay the leg all the way out so the model is flat on the ground if we want it to be there or anywhere in between those two points, right? On top of that, moving the leg back up it is limited by this piece right here as you can tell and the leg again kind of holds it just above the ground at this point right so that way you get both kinds of connections and you can have the legs splayed all the way out with it flat on the ground or splayed all the way in with it sort of flat on the ground or stand it up taller if you want to so easy enough to understand i'm really happy with that but it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense if it could only move in those directions so it actually is a vaki hip built into the body right here to move the leg front to back just like this it has just under 90 degrees of motion that was intentional it is limited on both sides by these metro uh she uh, not shield thigh armor pieces and the reason for that is because i don't want the legs to be able to collide together to bang together uh but i also want to give them like as much sort of range of motion as possible so by adding that in, by adding the Mata foot in here on the side, etc., it limits it in both directions to not a pure straight angle and not a pure sideways perpendicular angle. And I think that that works out really well. Now the head. So if we look back at the model for a moment, there are a couple things that I can identify. First off, the feet. Those do seem to be this piece right here. Obviously minus the shield, which I added for effect because I like them. But this piece, generally speaking. On top of that, we can see that they are using the 2005-2006 larger hinge joint in the knee. I did not go for that right now, but I could see potentially using that, and I think LEGO still would. So I did design this in a way where I can add those in place if I do not like these, if these are too weak to hold this up, right? But the rest of the leg from this position is all lift arms. There's nothing clad onto the legs to design them in any way, to make them look fancy or special in any way. And so obviously I dress up the legs in order to sort of accommodate for that. But the upper legs, again, are a little bit more messy because I still need to work on the aesthetic of those. The head, which I can see here as well, first off has these two pieces, which on my model are just connecting to here right now, but also seems to have from what I can identify, if I click on over here for a moment, an eye right here, I think I can see a subtle trans neon green sort of shade here, but that could be the table beneath it. That could just be a hole in the model without shadow behind it. Hard to say. On top of that, though, we can see what appears to be Vaki weapons here. These little, like, eyebrow uh, uh, things. I can't know that for sure by any means, but that's where my head is at currently. Lastly, and before we move on from this, right here, although I don't think proportionally it's correct, looks to be maybe the Pohatu Mata type of arm, the Slicer type of arm. I don't know that for sure because it looks a little too big for the rest of it. So I could be wrong, but again, it's so low uh, quality. This picture, it's literally like less than 300 uh, pixels wide. It's insane, the scale that I'm trying to work with here. Point being, just trying to get all of the landmark features I can identify from this into this model. I think I can also identify an open socket at the front, sort of representing a mouth, but I could be wrong on that one. And so, as I've mentioned, because the discs still play an important part of the story, I did also incorporate the pinchers in the front here as well. Kind of Vaki-esque in the head design in a lot of ways too, so not necessarily a bad thing. All right, so that is it for the build on this. Like I said, it, it is going to end up being a big model. I don't believe I have the parts to currently finish this as it stands. So I'm going to work on just the singular leg and then I am going to throw the model into studio. 
in the future, I will look to get the parts to create it proper. Again, probably in black or some other more accessible color. The, the red just kind of stands out to me here and again, looks too Scopio like in this scenario. Um, so I think I will go with black, but it's possible I use some other color instead. Really just depends on what I decide. It's up to me, right? And uh, in the studio file, I may make one version of it Metro Brown as well, just so I can kind of see how it's going to look aesthetically. So that is it for the Water Strider progress so far. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And again, on the Discord server, which is linked in the description, you will find my rewrite of the 2004 story, and it even rolls some aspects into 2006, 7, and even 2008. Since my 2005 Wave 2 sets are actually the Toa Nuva in the present timeline, not the flashback. My story just generally tries to simplify a lot of like flashbacks within a flashbacks, redundant characters, the introduction of unnecessary characters and more exposition, which honestly just kind of overcomplicated things for me. And that's just for me. All right. So you can check that out. And of course, as always, Instagram, Patreon are both down in the description as well. Really appreciate the support. And of course, I appreciate all the subscribers here. See you on the next one. Take care.